Did that work? Being recorded. Okay. Got yep. it. Now we're recording. Okay. So we're live. We are live. All right. I'm excited to talk with you for a little bit about geocaching. Uh, it's a fun hobby that I started about 10 years ago. And um, I do off and on. I like to take my kids on it and uh, so I wanted to just share a little bit about the hobby. It's, this is called Geocaching 101, so um, that would imply that it's kind of the most basic level overview of what things are. Um, and I think the best way of doing that in this kind of format is taking you through uh, the website itself and how to do it. So uh, first, right up from the beginning, um, I'm Mike Miller. I work at Alco Credit Union. Uh, my wife, Melanie. Uh, runs the library. You all know her very well. And um, I, like I said, I've been geocaching for about 10 years, and this is my profile page when I go in to, to log in. So what geocaching is, is it's basically uh, other people going out and getting uh, their coordinates from a GPS device or their phone from where they're at and getting permission uh, to hide a cache, uh, C-A-C-H-E, um, that can be uh, anywhere. I'll show you a picture here. Here we go. Here's a couple examples of geocaches. I liked uh, this picture because I'm not very good at it, and it's tough sometimes. I just had one last night that if they're really blended in like this into the environment, they're, some of the coolest ones are like, like this log here. It's just kind of sitting out of the middle of nowhere. Um, and I'm used to seeing, and I'm fairly good at finding things like this. So this would be kind of a a small size uh, sandwich container kind of thing. And inside here would be uh, number one that makes a cache is a logbook. So it would have a little uh, piece of paper in here uh, or a notebook. And basically you would go to these coordinates and you would uh, find this hidden somewhere, maybe in the nook of a tree or something. And you would you know, look around and make sure nobody was seeing you. That's a big thing because uh, you want to be kind of secretive because if people uh, don't know what's up, uh, then they might see you looking at something and think you're, you know, I don't know, doing, you know, something unspeakable, doing drugs or something like that, you know, and they might go and mess up the cash for other people and take it away or, you know, just general things. And so one of our fun uh, terms I, is called a muggle. Oh, can I ask a question? Yeah. Or not really ask a question, yeah. I guess, but... Um, you probably also want to be secretive so that it's not giving it away, right? Like, so if other people see you, they still have the opportunity yeah, to search I, for it. Yeah, especially if um, it's during an event or if it's in like a high traffic area. Uh, maybe there's other people, everyone has their phones out, so you can't really tell who's, but um but yeah, a little less so, I think, um, but more so just for uh, you don't want people to ruin it because it takes a while to plan out and get permission to do a cache. And that's important is if you see any cache on the site, um, and I'll show you the map, that's kind of always fascinates me. Uh, if you see the map, it'll show you all the different geocaches that are available in your area. And um, it goes without saying, I guess, that uh, they have to get permission from the landowner. It could be in their land. Uh, if it's on public land, I just did one in the Wellsville uh, campus of Alfred State, uh, and they specifically mentioned on there it was approved by the dean. Um, so I don't know if the dean changes, if all of a sudden that goes away. But um, but yeah, you want to kind of... Um, so you look around for these, and um, then you can open it up. And the most fun is there's some little, sometimes for kids it's fun because there's little items in there that you can trade. Uh, so if uh, some people ask me, well, what kind of items should I have when I just start out geocaching? I think one of the items is, uh, you know, a few things that you can kind of, little knickknacks that you can leave. Some people create their own like uh, little rocks with like smiley faces on them or something. And they have like their own uh, kind of unique thing that they like to leave behind. And uh, so, but we'll get into a little bit more about what's in the in them. But the main thing is there's a container um, of differing sizes, uh, and then we'll go over the sizes later. Um, but um, from very small, this size here, but you'll see that little thing sticking out there. That's a little rolled up log. So that is actually a geocache. Um, and you'll unroll this, and you'll be able to put in very tiny letters the date and your 
gamer tag, your not gamer tag, your caching name. So mine individually is uh, MG Miller Biz. So that's my cache title. So everywhere I go, uh, I got two last night, and I'll go and we'll put the date 719, and I'll put MG Miller Biz. I took my eight-year-old with me, and she wondered what to write. So I said, well, you can be VG Miller Biz. Um, because, uh, and so she wrote VG Miller Biz um, on them, too. So she was able to, to log them. Uh, and then I de- it's supposed to be so, like, the person that owns this geocache can come out after a while, and they can check their log. And they could, if they wanted to, go on and check. And, and maybe they do. I don't own any. But um, they could check and make sure that, you know, the people that – uh, actually signed the log, or, or the people that claimed the find online actually did sign the log. So, so here's a couple examples from the very small. These are nanos, they're called. Um, all these little things could be examples of geocaches, uh, and these aren't that big. Um, they can get quite big. Uh, my some of my favorite ones are big ammo cans, and uh, those are those are big. And then there's also uh, like a five gallon bucket sometimes. So those are kind of the biggest. Um, that's the sizes, um, and I think I'm going to show you the so the very first geocache. I think it was in the early 2000s, and it was just about when uh, GPS coordinates it became. I, I the story's a little fuzzy because it's been a while. Um, uh, just when they became like legal or, or non just for the army kind of thing, you know, when when anybody could General Joe Smos could use could use them. And so almost immediately when that happened, somebody said, well, this would be kind of cool to, you know, place something and then give the coordinates and then they go look. And so there was a couldn't find a better picture, but up here, a very little tiny picture um, in the original five gallon bucket uh, was placed a bunch of items. And you can read about the story online. Um, but in that bucket, there was uh, one of the items was a can of beans, and uh, that item has become like a holy grail item. So that was the very first cache, one of the items in that cache. And I went um, a couple years ago, it tours around like a rock star, and I went around and uh, took a picture with this stupid can of beans. Um, and I, this was like five years ago, so I don't even know if the thing is um, still around or if it's, uh, you know, disintegrated, but uh, it isn't any longer, it's not legal or, or um, it's frowned on if you put food in. So you don't want to do that anymore. So you shouldn't find food in. Uh, but um, So I wanted to show the types of geocaches. So I did take this from, I think it was called peanuts or pretzels.com. I had written down. Um, I just kind of made it in a little bit of a format that I could use a little bit better. Um, so types of geocaches, uh, I think it's important to um, Look ahead of time. Let me get some of my notes here. Um, look ahead of time to see kind of what you're getting yourself into. And th- these are kind of the items that you can see. Uh, you can see what type of cache it is. And so that'll help you decide, you know, if you're going to be able to do it. So, uh, for instance, the traditional geocache is just those items that we looked at um, in the picture. So this is just one item hid somewhere. Um, you know, you go to the one spot and it's there. So that's traditional. Um, a multi-cache, uh, here's an example of one. You might not want to start something like this, you know, if you're out on vacation, because a multi-cache uh, is you'll go to one location and that'll start you on like an adventure, basically, is you'll go to the first coordinates and then it'll take you from there to another location and potentially to another location. And it could be a number of different finds all in one. Um, the biggest problem you have with these, especially in the rural areas, uh, I found a few where a couple of them are still active and around, but some might go missing. So if it's like a five or six pieces long, if even one of them before the end goes missing, it ruins the whole chain. So that's, you know, an unfortunate. Um, puzzle caches, this, I, I'm going to just go ahead and read this because it's really a catch-all um, of types. So you'll find a lot of different, so it could involve complicated puzzles um, that you'll need to solve. Uh, basically, it doesn't give you the coordinates up front. Like these will all give you coordinates that you'll plug into your either your GPS or you'll go through the um, program on your app. And that's how I do it. So just up front, um, I, know, I don't know as much about uh, having it on your, uh, an actual handheld GPS. I just know basically using the app on my phone and I've done that the whole time. Um, so you do a puzzle. Um, the, a famous one is like, say you go into a graveyard and they'll say, um, 
you know, take the um, date that so and so died, um, you know, and subtract this, and and they'll do a few different things, and and you'll do like a math puzzle almost, a math problem, and it'll give you, it'll form itself into uh, the coordinates, and then that'll take you. That's just one very simple example, but you know, like that. Um, one of my very favorites um, are so neat is called an earth cache. And these are located at like, like here it says special geological locations. And so um, probably along locally, like uh, um, what's our park? Uh, Letchworth. Uh, there's probably a couple in, in the Letchworth area. Um, so these are in areas that are maybe geologically uh, um, earth science teachers, basically. You know, this is this is for them, and it'll take you to places that you don't really think of going. And it'll it'll say, take a picture of yourself with this, or answer a couple questions. It's almost like a test. It'll say, um, you know, uh, look at the local signs of what this is and answer a question. So that's kind of how you prove that you're there. And then the person that runs it is supposed to respond back to you that yes, here these are all correct. And then you get to log these earth caches. And so not only do you get to go see really cool things and learn about them, but then you get the credit for, you know, getting the cash as well. A couple more. Um, letterboxing was an older form of thing where you had almost like a stamp and you would go around and you have almost a, like a little book that you'd collect these stamps and say, this is where I went kind of thing. And so they made it into um, geocaching as well. So uh, they did, it's a letterbox plus it's a geocache. And so it has its own type and you can go and um, get these special letterboxes and, and the stamp will be there and you can stamp your gear and stuff and show that, hey, I did the letterbox and the geocache. More here to mention, an event cache. This is like if you're having um, a, a small group, but it's, a, it's an official uh, thing that needs to be set up. Uh, I've never been to just a small event. I've been to these mega events. And um, let me get here, whoops. And uh, this is, has to be an event of over 500 people. So I went to two of these in the Allegheny State Park where they got all sorts of geocachers available, uh, around, and that was where I saw the can of beans. So they have this big old, they have food trucks, and they have um, uh, all sorts of things. They set up uh, event caches, and these below here, the um, cash in trash outs, and uh, it's a place where there are other geocaches, and they sell gear, and just a, a fun place to kind of meet other people that like to do that. Um, and so finally, um, one, I haven't been able to do any of these yet, but this is kind of a cool if you're into, you know, making our planet beautiful um, or helping out and being positive influence. Uh, there's a cash out, cash in, trash out. And so you go into an area and you um, are supposed to kind of clean up. So it's, you know, maybe in a park or something. And so while you're doing it, you know, you're taking a trash bag, you're cleaning up a bunch of stuff, and then you're meeting with somebody or, or showing that you did it somehow and you're getting credit for doing that. Um, so anyways, those are kind of um, the types. Look here, there was one other thing I wanted to show you. Bye. show you the cool thing here. Now, that I've, I've got you in. Hopefully, you're still with me here. And um, the, the coolest thing that I thought up front was I started looking at all of the different caches that are in the area. I put in here all. Like this. Load. So every little dot you see on here is a geocache. And I have Wellsville as my home location. So that's going to show. Okay. And as we get closer, so you see all these smileys. So that's one thing. If you get a smiley or I got the smiley, um, that means you found it. So these are all ones that in the past I have gone and found. And so as you log these over the years, uh, and I, I love stats and I love uh, logging things and things. So, um, you know, it keeps track that I have 220 uh, different finds in the last 10 years. Can you, can you show us how many caches are near Alfred? Yes, yep. Um, so let's go. So let's just go back out a little bit. Here is Alfred. Not that many. Um, this is the, I did look at it last night to see. These are on the university side, uh, and I believe this is up on the state side. So there are only four active uh, in Alfred right now. Um, 
And there used to be, so over the years, um, you know, people won't maintain them and eventually they'll get taken off. So there used to be some down here uh, by Alfred Station. Um, I never had any luck in Alfred. I guess this was the closest one um, I got close to Alfred. A good spot kind of close to Alfred is um, uh, Almond actually has a lot and Hornell. So here's a bunch um, just in the little area. I just talked to my sister and Hey, let's get the kids together and maybe we can go geocaching uh, in now. So um, here's a good way to kind of show um, what I mean by the different types. So uh, this, these, all these green ones, those are all traditionals. Okay? So that means you can expect to go and find one item uh, and go from there. Then there's the multiples here, um, the letterbox hybrid. hybrid. And then this is, uh, here we can take a look at one of these question mark ones. Um, here. And example of what a puzzle one would be. Let's see. No Roman numerals, you're going to need tweezers. Uh, Oh, okay, it looks like it's a special container um, with like a puzzle on the container. So you go to the location um, and then you'll, uh, so it says it's a puzzle container that you need to know Roman numerals for. So that's kind of cool. Um, so this is kind of a good example I might show you of um, one of my sections was how not to get frustrated because I know when I started out uh, and my daughter did it last night too and I was like, yep, that's what how I started is, especially if you're taking family, friends or people that don't know about it, it's good idea to try and um, you know not make it frustrating so what I do ahead of time is I'll try and plan out you know five or six different ones to go to uh, one then you have a little route to drive to and I always look at them each one so I'll say okay this one kind of looks cool um, and I'll look at how hard is this going to be difficulty the terrain difficulty um, and you know how big it is so these are big hints on um, you're going to want to try this out. The other most important thing I think is the number of favorites is if it has zero favorites, it doesn't mean it's bad. It just means it's kind of blah, just normal. But if it has a number of favorites, then one, yeah, it's kind of a cool container. Um, it's a bigger container, so you can leave items in there. So there's probably, um, so this is about a little bit bigger. This this is telling me it's about a, uh, an ammo box size. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is some kind of sealed up uh, ammo box with a lock on it that you have to figure out the, um, you know, something like that. So that, that would be what you're looking for. Um, and let's see. Normally I have this on my... So what's going to happen is if you have your phone open and you drive right into Hornell, um, it's going to show you the distance to and a line. And then as you drive, say you're driving up 21 here, um, the line is going to follow your car and it's going to say, oh, you're, you know, a mile away or you're a uh, thousand meters away or whatever, however you have it set up. So as you get closer and closer and closer to the um, ground zero, the GZ it's called, um, it looks like you walk right up the trail and it's hidden a little peak. Um, so what's going to happen is, and my daughter did it last night too, the very first thing I ever did was I thought the coordinates were like gospel. So I went up and I said, well, it says it's 10 feet away. So I literally looked everywhere you know, around me 10 feet. But a lot of times, especially around here where it's rural, um, there's going to be, uh, the coordinates are not going to be exact. So you got to know, and I did notice it said plus or minus 15 feet. And I would say, I know my rule is about 30 feet. So you got to kind of keep in mind that you're looking at a point where you're in the middle of the circle that's going out a radius of about 30 feet. Um, so it's not going to be exactly where it says it is. So that's important. That's another important thing not to get frustrated with. Um, so so there's that. Uh, and here's, a, you know, we'll use this as our example. Um, it's on my phone so I'm area okay sorry 
Um, so more things to kind of looking at this is uh, to look at the past logs. Uh, this is the most important thing to know if you know, uh, this is going to be frustrating or not, because you can read other people's experiences. Um, and so you'll look and see all of these people that have found it um, and if there's issues with it. So this is the bad face, the DNF, didn't find, did not find. So you want to make sure that the most recent ones are not DNFs. You want to see that, okay, in April there were three people that found it, um, and it looks like nobody since then has had a problem. So that's important because if, especially if it's your first one or two, you'll be like, well, I, I'm just bad at this. I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, you know, so, so this cache, this would be a good example for somebody that's fairly new to, to try out. Um, it does look like, another thing to say is um, it says, I believe it's premium. Okay, so what that means is that you do have to have the subscription to the website. Uh, luckily, it's only uh, $29.99, and that's for the entire year. So uh, even if you do it just on the weekends, it's really you know worth that. You can do it for free. It's just that these wouldn't show up. Uh, I don't know how they decide which ones are premium or not. I think it's up to the people that hide them. But typically, if they are premium, they do have a lot of favorites. People put a lot of time into them, and I just think that they want um, – maybe they figure that it's people that are more serious about it. That are used that are doing it, and um, you know, won't mess with their cash and things like that. So there's that. Um, I had a really cool example of the difficulty and terrain, but I can just it was like these cartoony pictures kind of thing. Um, but the difficulty is basically it's kind of like the little kid Easter egg kind of thing, where you're it's almost just sitting there, you know. Um, versus, okay, it's it's hiding, it's hidden behind some bushes and in a little nook, you know, um, as you get harder and harder until it's like, okay, this blends in with the scenery. Um, this is up high and blends in with the scenery to, I think it just had a, a face, like a smiley face, but it was like a, whoa, um, really difficult. And I have not found any of the, I don't even know if I've tried any five difficulties. Um, and then terrain uh, is important. I mean, know. in... Um, I mean, just to cut in here, you you're terrible at finding things on a well, good day. Well, that's true. I lose I lose tons <laughs> of things, so maybe that's why I like geocaching because it helps me practice um, <laughs> finding. So there you go. Um, but uh, so so yeah. So I haven't tried much with difficulty, and I'll get into the stats in a little bit, which I know is a little more advanced. But um, I think that's one of my favorite parts is how it tracks things. Um, so can I, and, and so that's premium only. Sorry, I um, I know that you are trying to get one from several different states. How many states have you gotten geocaches in? Sure. Um, let, is it okay? Let me do train first, and then I'll go to that right next. Um, five, I uh, six, six is the answer. But I want to show you specifically where it shows that. Um, here in a second. So terrain is another scale. And one is specifically important. So if you have a stroller or if you have, um, you know, if you're in a wheelchair, they, they specifically are that you can get to them. So you, if you're handicapped, you know, some of, a lot, some of them are actually accessible to you and stuff. Um, that's what makes it kind of a fun family uh, game for everybody. Uh, so two would be kind of like, you know, it's on a slope maybe. Um, as you go further, it's harder and harder. Maybe you have to trek through some woods and, you know, of thing five is specifically for if you need special equipment is how i always under understood it so um one example i know of is you need uh there's one up in a tree in a park and you need climbing gear uh to climb the tree it's not one you can just go up yourself so you need actual tree climbing gear uh, and it says it right in the log so people wouldn't try i would hope they wouldn't try it so so there's some really and and people make a big deal of if there's a five five then that's a really hard to find, really hard terrain. So that's a big deal if you found a 5.5. Five. Um, let me go to, where is it? I just, here's. These are all my souvenirs. One cool thing is every state that you go to, 
um, and this is something that people like to try and do, is um, every state that you get a cash on. So my very first cash would have been in New York, and this was on September 15th of 2012. And that was my first cash in my home state, well, my state that I live in. So I got the New York badge. And then a couple weeks later, it's like, oh, I got a badge. I'm going to go across the border here. And I got PA. And so then one of the things that became, you know, a couple years later, um, I was on a trip for work and I was right near the border with Vermont. So I made a special trip over to Vermont just so that I could get it. And then we went on a trip uh, here and I also went on a work trip. Uh, and got one in Louisiana. So it's kind of a, a fun travel thing. Uh, if you've been driving around forever and the kids are grumpy, it's like, all right, let's pull over and find a geocache. Uh, so that's kind of cool. And then these were um, events that I got, this um, ASP, which is Allegheny State Park Geobash. Uh, for eight, that's where I went. Um, there it was, so that was the event cache. And I got this for going, and this was Allegheny State, State Park Geobash nine the next year that I got this one in eight years since I went. So then there's a couple like uh, they make special uh, things about, oh, it's leap day, uh, you know, which only comes every four years. So uh, since February 29th, um, see, February 29th only comes around every four years, go and get one on this date because uh, a little bit better picture of me. This is the coolest part um, is the so if you don't pay, and I wanted to say with premium, you don't have to pay. You can do it for free. It just doesn't have premium caches, and it also doesn't have um, a lot of the statistics. It has basic stuff. So it was saying how many I found since my first cache. It actually goes and looks at I found the most in October, most on Saturdays. Um, I actually just had my slump broken because I was like, I'm going to do this talk, so I better go out and do it. So I didn't find a single one. You're probably going to be like, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, from April 5th, 2020, beginning of COVID, to um, July 19th, 2020. Um, oh, I'm on a streak. So it'll keep track of a streak. So if I went and found one today, don't think it's going to happen. Then it'll be like, okay, I have two days in a row, three days in a row, and so on. And so people, you know, they like keeping their streaks up. Um, track of your best day. So one of the things is, uh, oh, I want to beat my record. So I want to plan a big thing where I go around and I get 19 or 20 caches in a day because that's your most. Um, so then it kind of shows I did uh, the most at the beginning for a couple of years. Um, my little kiddo was born, the second one. <laughs> I haven't gone. I'm going to blame it on her. I haven't gone hardly since did want to show you there's some cool things down here. These are where uh, people get really nuts with. To be so fair to Violet, to be fair to Violet, she is now almost nine years old. So, yeah, right now, and she was she was loving it. So yesterday, I think she's going to want to do it. Um, so this is one of the cool things is it keeps track for you um, every day of every year uh, the numbers. So I've never found one on the first of a month. Uh, I've never found one on the ninth. Never found one, I didn't realize, I've never found one in August. August is the only month I've never found a cash. So on. So like the 25th, Christmas, sometimes people would be like, all right, I got to go on Christmas Day and I got to find a geocache and log it so that I got credit. Um, another thing down here is it keeps track of the types. So um, you might want to specifically, hey, I got to go get my cash in trash out because I have one, two, three, four, nine types. I want to get my 10th type. And some people will, I know one day I tried to get, um, you try and get maybe four or five different types all in one day. Maybe that's your goal. Last couple things here. Um, so these are the types. So I've found most, 45% or 99 have been micros. Um, and it keeps track. And then this is kind of one of the cool things that people like to see. This is their grid of how difficult. So it shows um, their difficulty ratings and their terrain ratings. So my highest difficulty rating, I found one four. And it'll actually, um, let's bring it, I think bring up at the farm, but actually went to the geocache it was. 
echo all of those that have that rating. So the easiest ones are obviously the one ones. Terrain's nothing. They're super easy to find. Those, you know, you can do quick and easy. Then as you go, like I said, here's a five five. So at some day, you know, somebody's goal, my goal is going to be like, I want to have at least one number in all of these grids. One of the cool things they added recently, I don't know when, since I last did it, was fill in your grid. And it'll actually search your area um, for all of the geocaches that are in, that are these combinations of difficulty and terrain. And it'll, it won't show one ones, it won't show. So that's really cool. And the last couple things that shows you, you know, the find nearest your house, um, cool find farthest from your home has been Louisiana. So if you travel a lot, you can be like, hey, I found one in Italy or whatever, you know. Up real quick, and you know, and I don't know if there are any other questions that you have or you can think of that other people might have. Um, is new here the filter thing they take out for whatever reason i don't like taking out my smiley um i have a question have you ever been out caching and had someone like wondering what you were doing oh well actually i was just looking at my list here i do have a few things i wanted to mention and one one was labeled just police um because I've had one specific item, um, but yeah, people in general will, but also I was on vacation once uh, in, on that work trip where I went to Vermont, I believe, and I was near a mall caching and I had my work clothes on. So, you know, I dress in business casual or whatever, and it was raining and I was at the side of this mall on this like slope kind of like bent over searching through bushes and stuff and a cop pulled up and started asking questions and so you know I kind of um, was like oh do you know what geocaching is and so I had to show them the app and I was explaining and he didn't seem very amused and he said um you know well uh can you can you be finished up soon and so I just said yeah I'll, I'll, I'll probably have this be my last one so so he didn't give me any trouble but um but yeah, I'm, I'm not really good at hiding it because I really get into, you know, and I'm horrible at finding things. So I, you know, get into trying to find it, you know. Um, I put in a couple items I wanted to mention. Um, one is uh, first to find, an FTF. So this is kind of a cool thing. I have three of them and people kind of make it a big deal. So if you put in uh, on your phone that you want to be notified, then anytime there's one within as many miles as you want. So I, you know, if I set mine for like 10 miles, Anytime there's like a 10 mile area, wherever 10 miles would be, that somebody puts a new cache out, I'll get notified. And so there's a special kind of, um, you don't get anything out of it, but uh, it's, it's like being able to claim, hey, I'm the first one to ever find that in the log on the system. So that's called an FTF or a first to find. I have three of those um, that I was excited about. Um, one last thing is, uh, of the items that go in there, there's these things called trackables. Um, and these are super cool. How can I find... So, um, show an example here, is there are items that are hidden in geocaches, and they have little numbers on them, and they're unique numbers, and they're coins, or they're tags, or they're whatever, and they can have goals, they can have, so like a goal, an example would be this travel bug, you know, uh, starts maybe in New York, and it wants to be put in a cache um, in every one of the 50 states. So, uh, if you're going from New York to PA or whatever, you can be like, all right, I'm going to take this. I'm going to log it on mine. Um, so you put it in yours, and then I'm going to take it to uh, another place in PA, and that'll be moving it on its way. And then you'll hide it again and put in your log, hey, I put the travel bug in there. Somebody please take it on its way. Um, and then you can track it. Uh, wow, since I've one on there, but I have a couple. Oh, your trackables. Well, I had started two, but unfortunately, one of them, uh, the cache got discontinued, um, and the other one's uh, never been taken. So, uh, but but this one actually went uh, over a thousand miles. So it's kind of cool because you get to see these items as people take them around, um, you know, moving basically, and it'll show you on a map. Uh,
So this is this was my tra trackable. Uh, it was the Racketeer, which was a John Grisham book. So hey, good for the library. I entered a contest or something to get this, and it was a marketing campaign. And so these were all the spots. Uh, these were all the spots that this got moved around. Um, and every time, so there for a while, it's stuck in um, Ellsville. Um, and it started moving. And uh, this moved over, what did it say, a thousand, a thousand miles, and uh, way to Albany, um, down to Philly, and then it finally got in one. Um, it got in one that it became private property, I guess, and so they took it off the list. Um, I can't get it anymore. But I've seen some maps of them that have just all over the world they've traveled, and it's just super cool because it's like you're touching something that all all these other people. So um, I don't know if there are any, uh, I guess, 220 finds. It's not a ton. Um, I've seen some with, you can look, look online and find, um, I have tens of thousands of finds, you know, uh, and that's like their main thing. But it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it, whether or not you pay for a premium, but I think it's definitely worth the money. Um, it gets me outside and moving around and uh, something with the kids and, uh, I, I like stats, so I like to track all this stuff and be like, oh, 10 years ago I did this, you know, and, and just like right up my alley. So, but yeah, so I'm MG Miller Biz. So if you're out and see my tag on there, that's me. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach out and I can try and answer them. Um, but I can. Thanks for watching. All right. I'm going to stop the recording.